Two years ago, I created an autonomous RC car, which is pretty much a miniature car that can drive by itself, detect signs, obstacles, and traffic lights. It was great, but I think together we can create something much better. So in this new video series, we'll be recreating the car completely from scratch with 3D printed parts. Starting from this first episode, we'll be creating the RC car part, the remote controller, and the car, which gives us a nice foundation and start for the series. Feel free to comment below any features you want to see in the car for the next episode. It could be anything. But let's get straight into it. It all starts with this main board, which you can think of as the car chassis, where everything will be attached to. We'll be going through everything that attaches to this main board, which ultimately, at the end, becomes the full RC car. Starting with the wheels, they are made up of two 3D printed parts, the rim, which is a hard material, and the tire, which is printed in a soft TPU material. The soft tire simply slides into the rim in a tight fit like this, which gives us a nice solid wheel for a good road grip. A tire alone like this is not useful, we need a motor to make it turn so the car actually moves. For that we can use these motors. They are a great option for projects like this as they provide sufficient speed and torque for little power. The wheel simply slides into the motor shaft for a solid connection like this. We need a way to attach this motor to the main board. For that we'll use this part. One side simply connects to the motor and the other side to the main board. However, as we can see when we turn the wheel for steering, the wheel hits the main board which we don't want because that means the car can't turn properly. It will have a very limited turning angle. So to overcome this issue, we can simply use a spacer to move the wheel under the board. To attach the spacer to the board, we simply use an M4 bolt with two bearings, one on top and one at the bottom for smooth frictionless steering. The motor mount simply then attached it to the spacer. So now when the wheel turns, there's nothing to collide with and it can freely rotate without any issues. All we have to do now is to do the exact same for the other side. And just like that, we have two front wheels that can smoothly rotate for the car steering. However, as we can see right now, when one wheel turns, the other does not turn with it. Well, obviously, because they are not connected in any way. So to connect them together, we'll use this beam that connects to these two left and right pivot points on the spacers. Now, when one of the wheels turn, the other wheel turns by that exact same amount. To control the steering mechanism, we will use a servo motor with an arm connected like this. The servo arm simply attaches the middle of the beam with a bolt. So now when the servo motor rotates, both wheels rotate in that direction, completing the steering and the front wheels of the car. However, as we can see, we need some wheels at the back. Since the wheels at the back don't need to rotate and will be fixed, we can simply attach them with two bolts to the board using a similar spacer so they are the same height as the front wheels, so the car is nice and level. This completes the main foundation of the car, it can move forwards and backwards, and steer left and right with a pretty decent turning radius. So far so good, this is a good time to remind you to like and subscribe if you are enjoying the video, and so you don't miss the future project, and so you don't miss the next episode of this project we will be making this car fully autonomous. You might have been wondering what this big space is for, this is where the battery goes to give the car a nice balanced weight in the middle. The battery is a 2 cell LiPo battery with a 5200 milliamp hour capacity. Now we could stop here, however there isn't really much space to put more stuff on the car easily. For example the wiring, boards and stuff like that. To get more space we can simply make another level using another board. And this is where the second level comes in, which is just a flat piece with a bunch of mounting holes for future potential expansions. It also has holes to allow wires from the first level to pass through to the top level. To attach the second level to the main board, we can use these four level spacers, one in each corner. The spacers have insert nuts on both sides, which allows us to easily connect them to the main board using four M4 bolts like this. And likewise, on the top side, we can then attach the second level board using another four M4 bolts for a solid connection. Now with this second level, we have plenty of mounting points, holes for wires to pass through from bottom level to top level, and of course, space to put our electronics. Speaking of the electronics, the electronics for this project is very simple. We have a transmitter side, which is the joystick controller, which we'll be getting to very shortly, and the receiver side, which is the car. The joystick controller needs to send data wirelessly to the car. We can do this using radio signals, which is achieved by using this NRF radio model. For the car onboard electronics, I use the strip board to bring everything together and to have a small footprint, to nicely fit on top on the second level board. All details of the wiring and components can be found in the description below. The main components are the microcontroller, which is the ESP32, the motor drivers, and the NRF model, 
which as we saw earlier is used to receive data from the joystick controller. So now let's see how this joystick controller is made. Two joysticks are used, the left one for the backwards and forward speed and the right one for the car steering. I also added two buttons, currently they're not used for anything but they might be handy later on as this project series continues and now our C car gets more features. There's also a switch to turn the controller on and off. These components are all attached to the lid of the controller, which then attaches to the main controller housing using two bolts like this. This is the wiring for the controller. It is powered using a rechargeable 1860 battery with the Tiny88 microcontroller to maximize battery life. Again, for all the wiring and component details, refer to the link in the description. And just like that, the joystick controller is done, the RC part of the car. Let's now see it all in action. First, we start off by turning on the car, then turn on the controller. We use the left joystick for the forwards and backwards speed for all of the four wheels, and the right joystick to control the steering. We can see that the controls are very responsive, the car has a decent speed, and it has a very good turning radius to make tight turns. Additionally, since it can be considered as four wheel drive, it can also go over multiple terrains and obstacles, which is a nice added bonus. And there we have it, we created a 3D printed RC car from scratch. This gives us a perfect foundation and start for this series, where in the next episode we'll be concentrating on making the car fully autonomous, where it will drive itself, recognize signs, obstacles and maneuver across the road. So remember to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And remember, if you have any ideas of additional features this car should have, make sure you comment below. It really could be anything and it might make it in the next episode. Check out the last project I did, which is a Nano Leaf Lights, or check out this random video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next project.